250,000 people on that night, there was probably 100 people scuffling around and doing something. Um, I thought it was at the time when Fred comes out and he's false, you know, and, and does this thing, I want to break free. And I was sort of immersed in me playing, as I very often am, and I looked up and saw all this happening, and I thought, ah, oh, maybe they don't like it, maybe they got some taste, you know, maybe they, right. you know, maybe they object to this kind of sexist um, stuff, you know. But in fact, I mean, and that's what the papers printed, because that was obviously a good story. Yeah. I suppose. But actually, I was told later that what really happened was somebody was heaved back into the crowd by security, not very gently, like thrown back in. Mm -hmm. And people objected to that and started throwing stuff at the security. So I think that is probably what was really going so on. So it was all blown out of proportion. Yeah, I mean, it certainly didn't amount to very much. No. When you and Rod started the band years ago, Tim Staffel was your lead singer. Yeah. What's Tim Staffel doing these days? Do you know, I don't know. Last I heard, I mean, I spoke to him on the phone, it must be a couple of years ago, and he was pursuing his artistic career, because he was really a, a visual artist. Right. And that's what he was at college doing. And I think he was working for a magazine, doing some graphic design or something. But um, not singing, which is a tragedy, because he's very good. Mm. I think. Okay, can you recall the first concert that Queen did as Queen uh, today? Yes, um, we didn't, we had this idea that we should practice and practice and write and write and be perfect when the time came, you know, which obviously wasn't going to quite happen. Because you continued but at college, didn't you? That's too? right, we were all at yeah. college doing our degrees. Well, I was doing postgrad, in fact, I got mm -hmm. my degree. John was doing his first degree. And we, the very first one was in a lecture theatre. I think it was lecture theatre A in the physics block at Imperial <laughs> College London, right. which held about 100 people. And we just sent out invitations to all our friends and all the famous producers and people that we thought might be contacts, you know, and none of them came. All our friends came, but none of the important people came. Yeah. And we played and we had a... How did you go? Fine, it was pretty yeah. good really. We good had reception? A, yeah, it's all right, you know, it's like... Well done, lads. <laughs> so, but, but in those days, did you think then, when you walked off that night, ten years from now, whatever, how many years uh, we will be, you know, top of the top of the block? I don't know. There's, you know, there's different levels. I think on one level we thought, yeah, we're the greatest thing in the world. We have something to offer which nobody has. You know, yeah. which you have to have if you, sure, sure. you know, you have to have that belief. But on on another on another level, excuse me, on another level, good on you. On another level, we were. Um, I think we thought. God, how on earth are we going to do this? Because we didn't know anybody in the business, you know. I think these days, a lot of people seem to get into the business even before they're actually playing in it, you sure. know. But we were there, we had our music, and we, didn't, we knew nobody, really. You know, and we used to invite people along. Um, I think the only person was John Anthony, who, was, who had done some demo tracks with Roger and I in Smile. <laughs> And we invited him along, but he would kind of come along and say, well, yeah, it's all right, boys, but, you know, you need a couple more years. Give me a call, you know, that kind of thing. And so we'd sit there and go, what on earth do we do now? You know, we, we think we play all right. We think we've got some good stuff. What do we do? So it was a lot of head scratching, a lot of hard times in those days. In those days, we were thinking about having the excessive light shows and the excessive sound. We had a very excessive light show in those days. We, had, did? we had one um, ah. projector, <laughs> <All right. laughs> which somebody used to put their hand in front of to make it flash. And so whose <laughs> idea was it to say, well, this has got to change for a start? <laughs> well, that was all we could afford. You know, I mean, that was more than most people bothered in those days yeah. anyway. You know, yeah. I mean, he, he was made to flash it in time. Right. <laughs> But uh, we always wanted to do that, and we always needed. A, we always felt that we needed a big sound system because we had harmonies which, which had to lay over a pretty ha hard and loud mm. backing sound, you know. So we needed a big PA, and we thought we needed the big lights because we wanted to be dramatic. We wanted, contrary to the, the fashion of the time, which was to go on stage in your jeans and just kind of, yeah, is there an audience out there kind of thing, mm. you know. That was the fashion. That was cool in those days, and we said no. That's not the way we're going to do it. If people are going to pay to see us, we're going to give them everything we have in that two hours or whatever. And that's still our philosophy, you know. And there's sometimes some flack thrown at us for, you know, for maybe going over the top on presentation. But to us, it's, it's part of the act, you know. It doesn't get in the way of the music. It helps the music to get across in that sort of time.